Hello and welcome to another segment of Aging with Dignity. I'm your host, Kevin Kirkland. In this week's episode, I want to analyze a rapidly growing program offered by Eternal Hope Healthcare, palliative care, also known as comfort care. What does it mean? Who pays for it? Is it a good solution for you and your loved ones? To answer these questions today, my guest is an expert in this field. He is one of the very few board certified hospice and palliative care physicians in this area. He's Eternal Hope's medical director for the inpatient unit and is over the palliative care program. It is my honor to introduce Eternal Hope's very own Dr. Aaron Bice. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today with you. Well, Dr. Bice, if you could, for our viewers, could you explain what palliative care is and how it differs from hospice? Palliative care is a specialized type of care to take care of people with chronic illness. It provides comfort care measures for both the patient and their family. Hospice is a specific type of palliative care when a patient is no longer seeking curative treatments. Uh, however, palliative care can be offered in conjunction with curative treatments. Interesting. And how is palliative care paid for? Palliative care is covered by Medicare, Medicaid, and most private insurances. It's paid for very much in the same way that care by a specialist, cardiology, neurology would be paid for. Would I necessarily have to have a terminal diagnosis to receive palliative care? Palliative care is for people of any age or any stage of a chronic illness. They don't have to be in the end stages of any illness to receive palliative care. They simply need to have chronic long-term problems that we can assist with. Dr. Bice, why, why do some physicians seem resistant to make a referral to palliative care? Physicians and other clinicians may confuse palliative care with hospice care. Many times they don't want to give the patient the impression that they're giving up on them. And what we want to help them to understand is that the patient can be anywhere in a long-term illness process, we're there to provide relief for the family and the patient. Interesting. So what exactly are the services that are provided by palliative care and, and how do patients benefit from that? Our services provide physical support, eliminating uncomfortable symptoms, um, providing spiritual support for the patient, avoiding polypharmacy, um, which means giving patients too many medications from multiple providers that, that might interact and cause problems, um, and also helping them navigate our complicated medical system. I see. And Dr. Bice, what would you say to the person that says, well, isn't that the same as home health services? Typically, home health services are to regain function of uh, abilities that have been lost temporarily, things that patient can regain full function and go back to their normal life. Uh, in palliative care, we're dealing with long-term difficulties that the patient may not get long-term recovery from and helping them to adapt to life with these new symptoms and, and difficulties. Is it possible for patients to receive palliative care in hospitals? Yes. Many times the patient's primary hospital physician can ask for a palliative care consult. At that point, our clinicians would provide a consult, would ev evaluate the patient for appropriateness for long-term care, uh, provide our options for services for their long-term medical problems, and hopefully educate them about the long-term outcome of those problems and how to deal with many of the symptoms involved. And why would it take a specialized physician to provide palliative care services? Palliative care is overseen by a specially trained physician in palliative medicine, but the team also consists of nurse practitioners, social workers, chaplains, and a team that's involved in dealing with very complex medical issues and long-term illness. Okay, and what about treatments? Would a patient have to stop treatment if they elected for palliative care services? No, a patient could continue receiving other types of care at the same time. An example of this would be a patient with cancer receiving chemotherapy or radiation therapy. The palliative care team would simply be 
adding an additional level of care. Will palliative care pay for medical equipment and medications? Patients receiving palliative care will continue to get medications and any medical equipment through Medicare or other insurance plans. Okay, so what about suitors and nurses' aides? Will palliative care pay for that? Custodial care is not paid for by palliative medicine. However, our social workers are happy to assist patients and their families in locating resources that may be able to help with sitters. And how often could a patient and their family expect visits from the palliative care team? Members of the palliative care team will come up with an individualized plan for each patient. That way, as the patient's needs change, our visit frequency can change as well. Visits might be weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly, depending upon the patient's needs. And once a person elects um, to utilize palliative care, how do they stop it if they no longer need it or want it? Palliative care is no different than seeing any other specialty provider. The patient and family can elect to discontinue services at any time they desire. Okay. And can you receive palliative care in the home setting? Yes, this is known as community-based palliative care, which means that the care team comes to your home to provide services. This prevents the patient and family from having to travel to a specialty-based palliative care clinic. And can a patient receive palliative care in an assisted living or nursing home? Yes, palliative care can be provided in an assisted living facility, a personal care home. It can even be integrated into nursing home care for the patient. And Dr. Bice, does accepting palliative care, does that mean that that patient is soon to be a hospice patient? No, palliative care can begin as soon as the patient is diagnosed with chronic illness. Whether it's for symptom management or education in their disease process, palliative care can provide services for that patient. And many times their need for palliative care services is quite earlier than the need for hospice services. Wow, okay, so how long could a patient receive palliative care? The palliative care team will remain involved as long as the patient needs their services or might benefit from those services. I see. And Dr. Bice, what about the patient who lives alone with no support at the house? Yes, palliative care can be provided to patients who live alone. As a matter of fact, the team can also help them establish a plan for when the patient is no longer able to live in their home alone. Well, Dr. Bice, thank you very much for coming on the segment today and helping educate our viewers on palliative care. Thanks, Kevin. It's been my pleasure. In winding down this segment, it's important to understand the differences between hospice and palliative care. It's also important to consider how palliative care might be able to benefit you and your loved ones. If you think you would be interested in palliative care, talk to your doctor and let the experts at Eternal Hope help you navigate this healthcare system. Join us in our mission in helping our communities become comfortable one family at a time. Until we meet again, I'm Kevin Kirkland and remember to stay hopeful.